Today on The Grave Talks, Elementals, a conversation with Steph Mina Brady. The earth and nature seem to have magnificent powers. What if what we write off as Mother Nature simply doing its job is something much more complex? Something involving beings that we can neither see nor fully understand. What if these beings loathe us and our destructive ways of caring for the Earth? Today, we discuss the world of elementals with paranormal investigator Steph Mina Brady on The Grave Talks. I was probably like four or five when I would see angels like go by the, the window or be in the room. And then as I grew up, I kind of lost that. But then in college, I had a boyfriend that died. And um, for the first three nights after he died, there was an opaque white mist in the shape of a person in front of my bed. And every time I looked to get, try to get up, he would block my way. And my roommate woke up and saw it. And, but the day of the funeral, that was the last day I ever saw him. So that piqued my interest. Yeah, I, I would think so. Let's go back to the, the angels that you were talking about. Number one, right. uh, defining it as an angel. Uh, how did you get there? Tell me Tell me in depth if somebody said, what did you see? What was that experience like other than just I saw angels? Explain yeah, it to I me. Yeah, I was just sitting in bed looking out the window. Couldn't sleep. It was night and just looking out the windows. And I'd see that they would be like divine creatures with wings floating by. Almost and like it was, almost like you'd was, see in a in a painting or something. Yeah, exactly. Really, exactly. It's just beautiful and divine, so, and glowing all over. So it was very obvious to you what it was. It wasn't you just assigning that label to something that you didn't know what it was. It was clear as day. Like this is what I've I see I've seen in books and paintings and all it, that. Yeah, it was definitely clear as day, without a doubt. We did a church and everything. I mean, I grew up Catholic, mm -hmm. so there was a lot. Of, there's a lot of angels in there, so you know, pictured in the Catholic Church. So yeah, I definitely knew what they were. How old were without you when, when when this these experiences were happening? It's about four or five. And and when you were seeing these, did did, did these sightings continue on as you got older, or was it mainly in that they four to five window? They didn't. You know the the. The way people say is that the kids are told, no, you didn't see that. And, and they lose that over time. All kids are born with the ability to see. Mm -hmm. And they do uh, see spirits um, and angels and everything. But as they get older, people tell them that, no, you're not seeing it. You're just seeing things. And so they gradually start to believe it and lose the ability. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened to me, to be honest. Why? I mean, when you look back on this and and you you recall this, I'm assuming, you know, pretty clearly. Uh, why do you think you were seeing the angels going past your window? Was there something going on in your house at the time? Was they there? Are they just always there? I mean, explain to me that they were just they were just always there at night. OK, you know, I don't I don't know. If there was anything special going on in the household at all. It was I, I you know, I daydreamed a lot. I I, I thought a lot. You know, I played with myself a lot. I was a loner. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do. I would stare out the window in the dark. And I would just see them floating by or, you know, so. Did they, that was just my thing. Did they, <laughs> uh, in terms of size uh, of what you were seeing yeah. at the window, were they like the size of human beings or were they smaller, larger? What, they were what? smaller. They were smaller, about half the size. Really? From what I remember. Did you ever talk so, to anybody about it? Did you ever talk to your parents or I friends did or anything? I talked to my parents, and they said, "No, you you got a great imagination. You're just seeing things." So it was just so, just. It was just after after yeah. a while, you just kept it to yourself. As you got older, and you looked back on that experience, was there times where you too believed? You know, it was just childhood imagination. No, I never believed that. No, you, I always believed it was no. Okay. I always believed it was angels, without a doubt. So there was no doubt as, as you got older that, yes, in fact, you were seeing it. You just didn't take what other people were telling you, where they were trying to dismiss it. Yeah, exactly. It. Okay. There's no doubt, because now, I, you know, I'm intuitive. I, I I know things. I did shut it down for a while, you know, which I'm finding it harder to get back then. But, um, yeah, I you know, so I know I have gifts, mm -hmm. without a doubt. I think everybody has gifts, quite honestly. They just have to work at it. Sure. 
Tell me about, so you you had that experience, very young age, you go through teenage years, and did anything else happen in childhood where you were sensitive or that you looked back on, uh, and we'll get where it comes to working towards the uh, this situation, what happened to your boyfriend, but between those windows, was there other experiences for you? Not really. Uh -uh. That was just about it, from what I remember. So you had it kind of in your lexicon of, I've had the, an experience already. I was very young, but I remember it happening, and I believe it happened. So exactly, it's instilled in my mind forever. So when your your, your boyfriend uh, uh, tragically passes, tell me, tell me yeah. that story. What happened? How did you get the news? And, and then how how did this experience occur with the mist? Well, I knew it. I, I had a feeling something was going to happen. In fact, I was supposed to go out with him and be on the back of the bike, but I backed out and I told him to wear his helmet and he went off not wearing it. And evidently a, a, a truck ran him over and motorcycle truck crashed. I heard because unbeknownst to me, he had a fiance. Oh, wow. And uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, she wanted me to come over. She told me about it and wanted me to come over and sit with the family. Why? I, I had no idea. Mm hmm. But I did, and in fact, she wanted me to be there when they pulled the plug. That I wouldn't do. Um, but they did end up pulling the plug 10 days later, and that's when I started seeing this white mist for three days. And the rule of thumb, one of the rule of thumbs is, is that you have three days to go to the light, and then it disappears. And then you become what they call an earthbound spirit or a ghost. Okay. Wandering around. So, I, and I want to talk about that in a moment, but tell me more about where where were you when you saw the mist? What what was the environment? What was the setting? What were you feeling as you had those experiences? I was in, I was in bed, and I would the first night I just woke up and to get a drink of water and sat up, and there it was right in front of me. And then I'd try and get up like anybody would and turn on the light, and it would block my way. Like I said, my roommate woke up the second night and saw it. Um, it was always dark it was always after midnight and i would always wake up and see it there blocking my way i don't know if he had a message to tell me or if he just wanted to send his love before he went Mm -hmm. or what it was i just know he was there for three nights and like i said the day of the funeral that was it that was the last time i ever saw him now i talked to psychics that said he's still with me but um yeah, I don't know. Did you I, did you know that it was him when you saw the mist? Oh yeah, most definitely. How so? How how did you know that it was? Him? It's just a feeling. It's just honest to God, just a feeling, intuitive feeling. I I just knew there was no doubt in my mind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely no doubt. I could feel it's the energy. I could feel the energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, and, and people, you know, living people give off a certain energy. Sometimes, you know, d- depending on your level of sensitivity, you could be blindfolded and you could have people right. walk in and out of the room and you could almost identify who they are just by that energy. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Everything gives off energies. The demonics give off energies. The earthbound give off energies. The, even the aliens give off energies. And actually, I'm working with an energy teacher now that you can sit in, in your own house and bring that energy over to you and get rid of it in your own house. And it actually has been working. It's incredible. And, and we can talk about that, too, in, in just a moment. Right. I, I want to uh, ask about w- when you are in that situation and you are encountering the energy of, of your boyfriend who died. You know his energy from when he was alive. Does it feel the same? Is there something different about it when someone has passed is is there anything different about it stronger less you know anything or or is it just it's less okay it's less definitely because i th- i think in the end what i've been told is that once you cross over um you're you're not as strong as you can be you have to work for it mm-hmm. like anything else you work for um uh what, what elevating to different levels to um uh, learning how to, just like you do here, you know, learning how to walk, learning how to run. You do the same thing in spirit. Mm-hmm. So you what? work at your life. You bring your, you're the same personality when you die mm-hmm. as when you were alive. I mean, if you're, you know, a mean old cuss, you're going to be mean old cuss. You carry your personality and your free will over with you. 
How did you walk away from that experience after three days of, of seeing this mist in your home, knowing it was your ex-boyfriend or your, your deceased boyfriend? Uh, what, right. when you walked away from that, when that it, stopped, what, what was going through your mind? It actually calmed me because it convinced me that there was an afterlife. Whereas before I wasn't sure. Okay. I mean, I was like a lot of people were scared of death then. So it did. It caught my nerves. It told me that there was an afterlife, and that he was, and that he was okay. You know, that's how I felt that he was okay. Did you share that you felt you were having these visits with his fiance that you found out after the fact was there? I know I didn't share it at all. Okay. No, I didn't think it would go over very well. Sure. <laughs> that might cause a little friction. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> I wasn't very welcome in the house. I don't know why she invited me, but I was not welcome in that house. It was clear. I mean, it, th that's an interesting thing. I mean, you're, you're getting the visits from your boyfriend, and then after the fact that he passes, you find out there's another person there. How did that affect? I mean, how you yeah. felt about the situation of, of him visiting you? I mean, there had to have been some hurt there. I would think of. Uh, I mean, unless you had been yeah. aware. There was a lot of hurt, but I think the feelings were stronger on his end than mine, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think he was in love and I wasn't, so there really wasn't a lot of hurt, a lot of shock. Okay. Definitely a lot of shock. Yeah. And a lot of wonderment. I still to this day don't know why she wanted me there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, to me, it boggled my mind. So you, you have the experience of of this, of your boyfriend visiting you after his passing. You get the confirmation right. that there's something more in this world and there is an afterlife. Where do you take it from there? Do you have more experiences uh, after that prior to getting more into investigative work? Or where does life take you at that point? Life took me um, to raising three boys, quite honestly, for 30 years. Okay. And then after that, I last one left the nest. I decided it was my time to do my passions. I became a paranormal investigator. I, you know, got tattoos. I got a convertible. I just started doing everything I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And two of my passions were the paranormal and helping people. So it's great because I get to combine those two. How did you begin going into the world of paranormal investigation? I got with a group. I actually, and I, uh, they trained me basically for a, about a year or two. I stayed with them, and then I decided it was time to grow, so I started my own group. Well, and um, right, oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, what was it like, you know, entering that world of paranormal investigation, having had experiences, you know, thirty years prior, but you know, you're you're a right. whole new person thirty years later. You know, things are obviously quite different in your life. Um, you know, yeah. how, what's your mindset going into this? Obviously, there's interest and there's passion there, but this is a whole new thing to take on. So, how how are you going into it and, and learning? And, and what are you what are you experiencing as you enter that world? I went into it with excitement, with adrenaline, quite frankly. I uh, and and I, I had a I wanted to help the spirits cross over. Quite frankly, it's something I've always wanted to do. I feel bad that we're just cleansing them at, the, at some point and sending them out in the world, and I don't know where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of them, I believe, a lot of them really want to go cross over, and they don't have any means to do it. So people have to help them cross over because they're just they're stuck. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, I mean, there's many reasons why they're stuck. They they could have died angry, they could have died fast. They don't know they're dead, so just wandering around. They're attached to the land or or people or or whatnot. So um, there's a variety of reasons why they're stuck, but a lot of them do want to cross over. Did you have any any intuition, any feelings? that that really solidified this this feeling this passion of wanting to help spirits uh, cross over uh, or, or was this something that you just kind of had, had taken on from you know learning and reading about uh, paranormal investigations and people that help spirits cross over how did that speak to you in such a strong way it just it came from my heart it was a passion you know i felt horrible that you know i, I put myself in their in their feet mm -hmm is what I did in their shoes. And um, I just felt, like I said, I felt horrible that we were just cleansing them out of the house. 
with with no help because they're people. They deserve respect, help, and compassion as much as my clients do. Tell me how you learned uh, and and realized that you're an intuitive and that you you are sensitive to these things beyond the experiences that you had initially when you were younger. Um, things just came to me and they they came true. For instance, I had a case where um, we were trying to determine what it was, and it came to me just elemental dwarf. And when I came went in there and asked him, we had our, our REM pods, our sound making machines, about five of them on the ground. He just went buck wild setting every one of them off in succession. That was the way he communicated with us, was by those devices. He wouldn't EVP, he wouldn't do anything but the, those devices. So um, that's one instance. And um, I, I know the night that I went out at 2 a.m., I was sitting in my car and I found it dead. There was no reason for the battery to be drained, but it was completely drained. Waiting for AAA, and um, all of a sudden the headlights started flashing on and off the radio. The whole panel started going on and off in honking. And um, I think it was his way of telling me, you know, don't come back, <laughs> mm -hmm. quite frankly. So, but I didn't come back. I, I've actually been working on that case for about a year and a half right now. Elementals, I'm finding, are extremely hard to get out. My my thought is that they built that house directly on his house, and he's, uh, quite frankly, one ticked off little dude. Ex he didn't want to go. Explain to, to the audience, uh, in your words, an elemental, and you, you described it as an elemental dwarf. What exactly is yeah. that for one who doesn't understand that? They have the elementals of groups, like there's um, elementals of the air, fairies, elementals of the water, like nymphs, elements, and this is the elemental of the earth, a dwarf is, along with trolls, and, um, you know, there's just a variety of them, hobbits, and, but the, the dwarf is the one that's in the house right now, and I really honestly didn't even know that, that dwarves existed until I looked it up afterwards. And they have their hierarchies uh, like we do. They have their kings and their their kingdoms and, um, you know, soldiers and everything like that. And they're just put there to take care of the earth. That's their passion is to take care of the earth. Are these and, uh, are they things that people uh, obviously you've had an ability to, to sense them. Are these things that, that appear as spirits or ghosts almost to the living where they would be confused for that uh, because, yeah, they are, because they come they in to go? Spirits, okay. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. I, in fact, the lady that lives there actually saw um, one where a short person run by really fast in a pilgrim's outfit. So, you know, you do see evidence of them occasionally. A lot of people I know have seen fairies. Are, are, are these entities, because we talk about all different things where you have, you know, spirits of the living that were once here, were people, we have stories of angels, we have stories of demonic things that, that never really did walk the earth, right. but are there. Are these elementals, are they in a category of things that were never living as, as being a human being? Are they something separate from, from all of those other categories? Definitely. In fact, they were supposedly created when the angels were created. So they've been here for thousands of years. And yeah, they are spirits. They're, they're not humans at all. When you're dealing with something like that, are you dealing with something with good intent, with negative intent, with just their own intent of just kind of their individual uh, you know, goals or what they want to do. Cause a lot of times we, we kind of assign direction to a, a spirit or, or some sort of entity that one is, is dealing with. What are you dealing with when you're dealing with an elemental or does it really depend on the one that you're dealing with? It depends on the one that I'm dealing with, like everything and every, everything there's good and there's evil. So in the elemental world, there is good and evil. And so I have to deal with it case by case as an individual. Mm -hmm. And he turns out to not be evil. He's just extremely mad. He, he Every night for the last, I think, eight years almost now, he'll come and prod him and jump on the bed and, and pull their hair all night long just to keep him from sleeping. I don't think they've had a good night sleep in eight, eight years. But they're not going to leave. And this is your client that's experiencing these things? Right, exactly. So tell I've me. I've called in everybody. 
tell me how this case begins. How do you initiate or how does the communication get initiated with you? And then how do you eventually come to the conclusion that this is what is haunting or, or plaguing this home? Um, well, they called me on the phone. I'm I'm very visible on Yelp or Google, and of course my website. So, and I was the only one they said they would take the case. Quite frankly, mm-hmm. and I had never even thought I'd never even dealt with an elemental. Never even thought of it. Like I say, it just came to me. You know, by process of elimination, we eliminated the demonic, the spirits, and and that just came to me, and it just was cemented. I knew I knew what it was. And so we've tried appeasing it with offerings. It has taken the offerings. It's it's crazy. Um, we've had shamans in. We have everything done. I've done demonic cleanses every day in a row for two weeks. That's the only thing that worked, but it only worked for a week. So um, I'm kind of, you know, with this, I've got somebody who wants to come over and help me with it, somebody on the Travel Channel. Um, but with the pandemic going on, we have to wait. Mm-hmm. How so, how do you go about explaining to the homeowner and the family? Because they're probably thinking ghost of, of, of some sort. Uh, how do you go about explaining right. exactly what this is in terms that they're going to understand and not say, get the hell out of my house? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually got an article and showed them that they do this type of entity does bother them they're mischievous when people are sleeping and it just it hit every point with them so they knew they believed me Mm -hmm. plus in addition to the vision that she'd seen run by her so the the sighting of this 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 short person essentially uh was was seen by the homeowner Yeah, exactly. Okay. What what sort of evidence did you come across in your investigative work to narrow this down beyond you saying, you know, you just knew you had this feeling. Tell me more about what what pieces of evidence drew you to that conclusion. Um, The fact that he took some of the offerings that we gave. um, Tell me about that. Tell me about the offer. We put out. We planted a fig tree for it. We put some beer there, um, some chocolate, some fruit. Some of the chocolate was gone, and a beer was open and empty. And they're in a locked backyard, so it's not very possible that someone would come in there and do that. So um, I try. I, I communicate with it. Like I said, it won't do EVPs, and it won't be cited by me on any of my video cameras. Mm-hmm. But um, it will communicate through the sound machines that I have, yes or no questions. And through that, um, I've gotten evidence, you know, just very affirmative from him. What sort of evidence? So, uh, like I said, when I asked him if he was a dwarf, when I asked him if he was mad, when I asked him if he was going to leave, would he please leave? When I asked um, if the house was built on his house. Mm -hmm. The answer was affirmative. I asked if he was mad. It was affirmative. So he communicates a lot on the uh, REM pods. It's interesting because these these elementals, I mean, it sounds like they almost have their own society, if you will, uh, where they're functioning right. and, and, and doing things. They do. Do they, uh, are they on a different plane and, and that, that kind of overlaps ours, a different frequency or something? And that's why we yeah, don't typically... Different- Dimension, if you will. Okay, yeah. You know, definitely on a different dimension. You know, I've also had psychics that have come through and and said, yeah, it is an elemental. Shaman came through and said, yeah, it is an elemental. So things like that, you know, were just kind of cemented it for me. With something like that, uh, that that you and and the the homeowners they're getting almost kind of glimpses of this this thing that's in a different dimension. And this is just an opinion based question, but. On the other side, on the flip side of that, how are they perceiving us and why are they mad that we're there? Are they just getting glimpses of us over on that side as well? Or are we full-fledged kind of invading their space? We're full-fledged kind of invading their space. Their job is like for the earth elementals to take care of the earth. Okay. And we as, as 
you know, culture, we don't take care of the earth very well. You know, we, you know, they're, they're digging up for houses, um, and that's on their houses, on their, their domain, if you will. Um, and just they appreciate it. They get very irate at that. They don't think we take care of anything on earth. What does, to, to say, you know, take care of the earth, that's a fairly generic statement, but yeah. as an elemental, how do they go about doing that? Um, you know, that's a good question. And it's a question I don't know, quite frankly. I'm just assuming they guard it, they tender it, mm -hmm. um, the plants, um, you know, the landscape, the grass, the flowers, everything, and they try and make sure that everything is growing because the, the plants have energy too, mm -hmm. as well as the rocks. I mean, everything has energy, and they're taking care of all that. And it would make it. Go ahead. Is it something that. You know, we sometimes, you know, we can look at nature. We, I mean, you, you plant a garden and you can sometimes right. just be amazed by how the the different plants and, and different species of plants and such can interact with one another. And that, you know, the, yeah. the sunflower heads will turn one way or this way and, and somehow this pollinated with that over here. And of course, there's bees and there's wind and there's all the elements of the earth that we can understand in theory how right. these things go from point A to point B. But it is, when you look at some of these things, fairly amazing how those things work. And to us, on as, as humans, we look at it and go, that's either a lot of luck as far as all of this is kind of working together or yeah. or is there uh, are they doing that are they kind of the unseen force that kind of helps some of these they things are. that you know get from point a to point b that that we just look at as well it's wind it's bees it's this or that is there something else there that's kind of helping guide pieces of nature together to do what nature they are, does definitely okay with their with their energy, they're tending the earth pr pretty much. That's that's their job is to take care of the earth. Okay. And they take it very seriously. So, like I say, they as a, as a culture, they don't like us at all. Do do they do things to try and and rid people out, out of their or, or scare people out of their homes? Do they they do they go to great lengths to remove people from situations or or their settings? I mean, what what do they do? What depths yeah. do they go to? They do well. For instance, the dwarfs and, and the gnomes and and all of them. Their technique is like they're doing to my clients. They bother when they're sleeping. They don't let them sleep. They're mischievous in, in their in the way that they do this. Mm -hmm. But they're constant. Extremely constant. And they don't give up. Absolutely don't give up. I mean, they, they work very hard to get my clients out of this house. My clients put their feet down and won't do it. They re, 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 remodeled the whole house with them. And the energy did take up. Did they have you ever seen a, a situation where they obviously that would cause mental harm uh, with constantly being tormented by oh, something? Yeah. Do they ever do anything that would cause physical harm to the living? Um, not that I don't think they do. No, not that I've heard of. There's very little out there on the elementals, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of research and there's very little out there on them. I think that's kind of why I'm I'm stuck on it because I I've I've heard right. bits and pieces here over the years of of these things, but I don't think I've ever had a real good in depth discussion about it, and it's always been fascinating to me because the first time you hear about this concept, you're kind of like, well, that one's a little out there, even though you've yeah, heard so exactly. many so many stories that are all a little out there, but but uh, they it pops up and and, and they there seems yeah. to be you know a a resounding theme with these stories in all different places throughout the world and it makes you go well what is this there's something to this i can't just say that that people aren't having these experiences so that's what i'm finding right. really interesting is someone who has done some research on it and is a, investigating it I'm, I'm finding it very fascinating do you think well, elementals can i even had a dream with them really? i even had a dream with him i mean it was just it was it was like almost a visitation i could smell it it was that real and I, I'm convinced it was a, a visitation. It's easy, easier for spirits and elemental types to come to you in a dream. 
it's far easier for them to do that. So I believe he came to me in a dream. Are elementals ever confused for dark or demonic spirits because of their intent that seems kind of mischievous and almost with negative intent towards the the living? Yes, definitely. In fact, there are evil elementals as well. And um, some people think all elementals are demonic. I've got an exorcist friend who's convinced that all elementals are demonic. Really? So it's, it's yeah, it's it's up there. It's up there for, for discussion, without a doubt. That wraps up part one of our conversation with Steph Mina Brady in part two. Are elementals ever confused for dark, demonic spirits? Do elementals ever die, or are they a constant with the earth? Why is it that spirits seem to only have three days to go into the light after one passes? Why is it that some spirits refuse to cross over? And how does Steph handle removing a demonic spirit from a home? All of that and more in part two of our conversation. Until next time, for the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.